I'm the type of gamer that likes to play the game and watch the cutscenes, but not really read any files, or notes, or really look up any lore for that matter. So I had the brilliant idea to talk about the game's story from yours truly, from my point of view, because I pretty much have all the qualifications, am I right? I mean, I got the game, I beat it multiple times, and I have a YouTube channel. So here I am bringing you Fear 2 Explained. We start with intro credits and a creepy background and then within the first minute we get a title card. We start the actual gameplay following Alma with the post-apocalyptic looking world with no explanation of what's happening. We jump into this little hidey hole and then we're just kind of in an army truck. Shit still doesn't really seem right. Then Alma jump scares the holy living shit out of us and then we are in reality. We get a debrief and our mission is to get to Genevieve Aristide who is president of Armicam Technology Corporation and we need to get her into protective custody. We believe that she is directly linked to the incident that happened on Armicam. Armicham. I think it's Armicam. Saba Saba. Sama Sama. Sounds like Spanish to me. And don't quote me, but I think Armicam is the organization that was trying to do the whole psychic army thing, and I think it's the area that was containing Alma at the end of the first game. Either I'm right, or I'm steering you guys off a cliff. But hey, it sounds good to me. The captain, or whoever is in charge, doesn't stress it enough that he wants her alive. Because I guess this team is really quick to pull the trigger, kind of a shoot first, ask question later type of squad. Because I swear, he tells us like five times to keep her alive. I'm good. No, that's exactly what you just said. How is that even possible? Which button is the button you're supposed to push? Point to it. No! Hottie McDotty here tells us that Aristide is trying to cover their tracks, so the fat cats may make Aristide keep her mouth shut, so she might be dangerous, and who knows, she might even pull one of those cool pill and mouth I'm deleting myself pills. Jankowski here doesn't like that he's been paired up with us, and wait, Jankowski? Oh wait, they have a different first initial. I swear I've never met a Jankowski in my life, but this fear department has two of them, I guess. We walk around for like five minutes and then we regroup and they actually have a funny interaction. The captain tells Jankowski to take the stairs and he's all like, The stairs? What the fuck, Tom? It's like a thousand fucking stories. There's literally one guy in this elevator and he shoots one of our guys, but it's okay because our guy's gonna live. So now it's just us, hot girl Stokes, and a dead guy in the elevator. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. We're the three best friends that anyone could have. We're the three best friends that anyone can have. And we'll never, ever, 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 ever leave each other. We finally get some gunfire action with Stokes here, but then we separate shortly after and continue until we get comms from Stokes saying that she isn't running into much resistance. Jankowski says that neither is he and that they must all be coming for us. And then he calls us Bucket. Our name is Beckett. Fuck this guy! I don't know what I did to make this guy hate me so much, but he needs to be careful because, you know, my mom is Alma. But they also aren't wrong. They're getting a fucking walk in the park, meanwhile I'm over here like... We get to a creepy looking pool that would look a lot cooler if they had some light beams and a DJ, but we jump in the pool and it's a tad bit deeper than we thought and we didn't bring our little floaties. And then someone says that she was down there for 12 years in darkness and then we pop out of the pool looking like... Then we see Alma just over here drying off from her little swim. We eventually get to this room where Alma wants us to play with this music box. It ends up giving a flashback of Harlan. And you all remember Grandpa Harlan, right? He's arguing with the guy about having to seal Alma away, although I don't know if he's for it or against it. It kind of sounds like... Does anybody have ideas? One, but you are going to like it. Wait, did you say are or aren't? Are. Then look who we run into. Aristide doesn't seem too excited to see that it's just us with no squad. And I don't know why everyone treats us like a fucking villain. Just because our mama is cuckoo ka -choo doesn't mean that we are. Aristide disappears in front of us and then we get a weird little filter on our screen until we run into a naked, probably jailbait Alma looking out the window. And then a nuke goes off in the distance. And I've seen Oppenheimer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
Barely conscious, we see Aristai telling a bunch of randos to take us aboard and that they don't have much time. I'm guessing we're dying. Next, we see some doctors checking on us and the doctor says something about lidocaine. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry, I don't either. But we keep switching between these doctors and these doctors, so I'm not too sure which is really real. We wake up and Stokes tells us that she has a faint read on us and the captain, but nobody else. So I'm guessing they're all dead, but who knows? We wander around the hospital for a bit until some spooky shit happens, and then we see this random guy shoot a poor nurse. We currently don't have a gun since it's not standard protocol to give you a gun directly after surgery for some reason, but we run into Aristide and she tells us that we need to get to the TAC lab, but to be careful because Vanek's men are after us, which honestly sounds a little bit flattering and everything, but Vanek is one letter away from Valak and I don't fuck with demon nuns. Someone does this a solid and tells us that we're about to run into an ambush, and Stokes is like, we, we, we hear you. He tells us that we could call him Snake Fist. Really? We get into this area where Alma is touching dead bodies while being naked on some weird necrophiliac type shit. We get to the TAC lab where Stokes and Aristide are waiting for us and we get into this tube thing where Stokes makes sure that this won't sterilize us. And I mean damn Stokes, if you want to make a baby just let me know, I'll jump right out of this tube real fucking quick, fuck saving the world. All I want you to do is clear the bags off this table and take me right now. Okay. But you can't. Oh, okay. Midway through, Vanek's men attacks us, so Stokes and Aristide leave. And then some Cthulhu looking shit murders all of Vanek's men, and then we get thrown into a flashback. Rai try to push Alma on a swing, but she's all like, Stranger no, 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 wait, wait, it's okay. Stranger it's okay. Danger. Oh, no, please. And then we're back in reality where Vanek is talking shit to us, and is it just me or does Vanek look like the dude from Life is Strange? We kill more of Vanek's men, and then Snake Fist tells us to get out of the building because it's gonna blow up, and he believes that if we die, then the world dies. And that makes me feel super validated. Thank you, Snake Fist. I really needed that right now. I get set on fire, so I'm running around like. <laughs> And then we find out that Alma could sense us, so I don't really know what to do with that information. Do with it as you will. I don't think that goes in there. And then this dude has a pretty painful looking death. However, I can't imagine being that flexible, so I'm actually kind of impressed, because everyone knows me. I'm like, inflexible Tina. We get jumped by Spider-Man on bath salts and then end up getting all of Spider-Verse attacking us. We find dickhead Jankowski getting what he deserves for being a dickhead to us, so I shoot him again just to really drive home the fact that I do not like him. Our next objective is to turn off the x-ray machine so we can enter the room. So we kind of just walk to the right and then turn it off and then enter the room. It wasn't a very daunting objective. When we enter the room, however, one of the homies tells us to stay away from her and that she is his. I'm guessing he's referring to Alma, but then he gets fucked up by her. And this is why you don't simp over demonic women. Like I know those super hot, big boob goth girls call my name too, but Jesus Christ, do not do it. They are one minor inconvenience away from turning into this. So, you know, just leave them off for me. Bro, I love the AI in this game. Our new objective is to pretty much get the fuck out of this underground lab area that we were in before it gets blown up. On our escape path, we run into this spectacle. I start to throw it back at him because, you know, I got a donk on me. And this man is unfucking phased. So since he was nice enough to not shoot me, I kind of just let him live. He gets to go see the family later on. It's a, it's a cancer, Ray. Holly Quinn, you gave me cancer? Why would they even make this? Well, that's it, Kev. I'm gonna spend the holidays with my kids. I'm so sorry. We get blown up again, since if you remember correctly, we get blown out of a window in the first game. But this time we get hit by a metal pole and then black out. When we wake up, this guy says, You're like three pizza and an anime. Tell me you don't want to hack yourself off a slice of this long, greasy dick. 
And I don't know why he's specified at an anime convention because I've been to Comic Cons and I'll tell you now, free pizza is free fucking pizza. I don't care where it is. It could be at Comic Con, at the strip club, at a funeral. I don't care. Free pizza is free fucking pizza. We eventually get to this area where the stepdad from Life is Strange is auditioning for us in our upcoming movie. He says that Harlan Wade built this place, kind of rehashing what was said in the first game about having a psychic army, and then says that the cracked out spider people are failed commanders. Then instead of asking us if he got a part in our upcoming movie, he he has a small army attack us in waves. So we take care of the mini army and then I butcher an assassination attempt worse than the guy who tried to take out Trump. Then I get disconnected from Xbox Live and ripped the 360 store because I heard it just got closed, you know, it's the end of an era. Just had to throw that in there. We then fight a mech suit in a classic human versus specific rim robot fight. We escape the area and Snakefist tells us that the facility we just escaped from was used to turn candidates into replica commanders. He then tells us that Aristide is thinking that she can contain Al Alma, but Snakefist thinks that Alma is too strong to be contained, so he thinks that we need to kill her. So, you know, that's dope. I get to kill a psychic murderer. We eventually get topside, and it kind of looks like Medusa just ran through this entire area on a rampage and just had staring contests with everybody. I run through them, though, and it turns out that they're ashes and not actually stone, which is kind of a bummer. Alma does some weird psychic murder mind game shit, and then Snakefist tells us that she's upsetty spaghetti that we're away from her. We run into this guy that looks like he's late to work, and we don't like people that are tardy to the the party so we shoot him just for him to run around with his lunchbox and some pretty little red ribbons following him. This guy does a really cool party trick, and then I get put on fire, which seems to be a common trend in these games. Griffin, who's the captain I think, tells us that he sees a woman that might need help. Come on bro, I just shot at a guy that was trying to get to work. You really think that that's a normal woman? Especially in this part of town? Like bro, we're in the ghetto right now. We get in a fight with a bigger Pacific Rim robot, and this time we get some help from an enemy. Classic the enemy of my enemy is my friend type moment. Although I don't know how much help he is when he's shooting himself with a fucking rocket launcher. We run into Hottie with the body Stokes and Stokes is stoked then I'm here so it's probably because she's actually getting shot by snipers, but anyway, our objective now is to give her some cover fire. We help her get past the snipers, and Griffin is still going on about helping this girl that he seems to have just lost. But fuck him and his girl problems, we get a fucking mech suit. We run into another mech suit, but now that the playing field is even, they don't really stand much of a chance. We eventually get to a parking garage, and our mech suit doesn't pass the height clearance, so we get out just to hear Griffin deal with his girl problem. Holy shit, this dude is shooting Alma. Stokes and I see this, so we run up to meet with Griffin. We eventually get to him, but Alma didn't like the fact that her stalker tried to shoot her, so she quite literally rips Griffin apart but lets us live. We then get into our getaway vehicle, and Stokey here wants us to tag along with her to go find Snake Fist. And like, if she wants to have babies, she just needs to come out and tell us already. We get to an elementary school of all places because, you know, we were just at a hospital earlier in the game, so why not add another creepy fucking abandoned place as well? But anyways, Stokes is questioning why Snake Fist is at an elementary school. Maybe Snake Fist belongs on another list besides guys that we need to save. Go ahead and take a seat. Take a seat right over there. Oh God. Oh no. What are you doing here? I'm just being stupid, I guess. I also noticed that this school is named Wade Elementary. You know, like Grandpappy Harlan Wade or Alma Wade. But wait, I'm just now realizing our last name is Beckett. So if I pull out my handy dandy Ancestry.com family tree here, Harlan would be up here, followed by Alma, followed by the Fear One protagonist and Fettel, and then Beckett, our main character now, is just kind of over here minding his own business. So it seems like we aren't even related to Alma like the first game. So like, why the fuck do we have slow motion and shit? Anyways, we break into the school and see the disappointing candy sales. I mean, shit, someone called SpongeBob and Patrick. You'll keep your face from getting any uglier, just in time. I notice it's fucking three o'clock, quite literally the devil's hour. And I swear, if I see any fucking demonic kids in here, I'm gonna lose my shit. We get a weird vision of the swing in a field, and then we get back to reality where we are separated from Stokes. So our new objective is to rendezvous with her. But what the fuck is this guy doing? He realizes that he actually sucks at piano and wasted all those years learning how to play, so we just kill him and continue on. Until I see this really nice drawing that I'm hoping Alma left for me, because it's actually very nice. Oh, look at that beautiful drawing. Yeah. 
I once again find myself shooting ghosts with my gun because, you know, that's just how physics work. I'm telling you guys, I don't know how people even get possessed. Just shoot the ghosts with your gun. Trust me, I played Fear 1 and Fear 2. I see a naked Alma and, uh, yeah, man, I smashed 10 out of 10, 18 year mistake. Alma's a baddie in more ways than one. I don't even care what you guys say. I see this guy's arm waving at me with some crackhead energy. We rendezvous with Keegan and Stokes, and then we get a vision where our new love interest, Alma, tries to jump us. But we're like, Don't rush me, Katie. I'm just not ready. And this apparently leaves Keegan too shook to move, so we carry on without him and Stokes. I go down a slide and then celebrate this accomplishment by doing it again because I don't remember the last time I could go down a slide in a video game. I also forgot that I'm playing a first person shooter and I get shot at while trying to go down the fucking slide. I then see these two guys get their skin melted off by Alma, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not too sure why she doesn't just do that with us. All I got is slow motion, I mean she can melt people's skin off. I run into a dark ass room fighting my meta metaphorical demons and eventually come out not traumatized at all. We grab a key card that we need to use to get into the nurse's office since we aren't feeling very well. Me told me it's sequel. But it turns out that there is no nurse in the nurse's office. Just more guys fucking shooting at us. And it turns out that the nurse's office office is a fucking undercover elevator. Like what the fuck is going on in this school? We get to the bottom and I see Aristide demanding the offsets from who I'm guessing is Snake Fist. If you don't know what the offsets are, here you go. Offset. Yeah. We finally run into Chloe's stepdad who I honestly forgot even existed up until this point. And this fucking idiot challenges us to a 1v1 like On Clarence Climb! Show me, show me what you got, mate. <clears throat> Take that. Fucking touch me, huh? The struggle lasts a whopping 5 seconds until we remove his head completely. We finally meet up with Snake Fist, aka Terry. Oh, I love being scary, Terry. <laughs> he says what regular Terry's thinking. This is taking too long! I'm gonna miss the farmer's market! He gives us a little hippo fun fact and a super cool laser gun and then... <laughs> yeah, that happens. I hope to god that was a quick death because Jesus Christ. Oh god. I gotta throw up in my mask. We leave the area and eventually run into Terry's head and I try to take his head with me to remember him by, but it's not moving, so I just leave it on the bench. We finally meet up with Keegan and Strokes for Stokes. She tells us that Snake Fist gave us enough information to bury Armacham forever. You know, the company that started all this. Okay, so this is a bunch of information, so I'll try to sum it up as best as I can here. Aristide fucked with us in the medical facility right after the nuke exploded. She gene spliced us to link with Alma, meaning we aren't actually related to Alma like I thought we were. See, I thought that we were the same protagonist as the first game, but it turns out our powers were given to us like Captain America. They weren't biologically inherited from Alma. So after all these years of playing Fear 2, I'm barely finding out that we have no connection to Alma whatsoever, while I was calling her our mother the entire video. I, I can get through this. Oh, I have a Damn. Aristide then tricked us into getting the telesthetic attunement which made the link stronger with Alma and this is also why she knows who we are, which is low-key kind of dope. Because you know, Alma's kind of like a celebrity at this point. I guess we aren't Professor X level psychic so we can't resist Alma, but there's a telesthetic amplifier on Still Island that Snake Fist thinks will give us the brain power we need to not only resist her, but to defeat her. Also side note, Still Island is the main testing area for Project Origin, do with that as you will. And then we quickly find out that no one in this fucking tank is wearing a goddamn seatbelt. We get out of the tank and start murdering everyone that put us in this shitty position, but during the firefight, Keegan just kind of slowly walks into the line of fire, with no one really shooting at him kind of in a trance-like state. It kind of seems like Alma is thirst trapping him and he's a simp for the thirst trap. But let's be real, I can't really blame him because I mean look at Alma, hot damn. Shit possessed me already. I see what might possibly be one of the best burgers I've ever seen in a video game, and it's rightfully called the clog. I mean, I can feel my arteries clogging up just by looking at it. I see this falling buzz and I'm not too sure what's going through my mind. I think I could catch it or some shit, but I guess I'm not as strong as I thought I was. But I can't help it that I'm popular. Definitely wasn't 
We get a call from Stokesis with the Mostis, and she tells us there's a cargo tunnel that Arkham uses that will lead us to Still Island. So guess what our objective is now? That's right, we gotta kill Stokes. Just kidding, we gotta find the tunnel. I see what might be the best subway conductor I've ever seen. We get topside and get into another fucking mech suit. Fuck yeah. We go on a murder spree and then end up on this empty ass road. I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. We maneuver our way through the edge of a cliff until we find the tunnel that leads us to the cargo area. We got more killing on the tram and then some sick snipe clips. Wait, so why are you breaking for me again? Because I found someone better than you and you're always cheating on me. Like, I had enough of this. Holy shit, I just had a Then we finally get on the correct tram to get us to Still Island. Stowe calls us to let us hear an old recording of Snake Fist talking about Alma's past, which is pretty much just more of the same shit as the first game. Just saying that Alma was put into a vault at the age of eight in an induced coma. She woke up after the birth of her first child at the age of 15, who I believe is the protagonist in the first game. Then a year later, the second prototype was born, who I'm guessing is Fettel, the antagonist of the first game. Alma didn't like them taking her babies away, so she controlled Fettel to do some shit, and the doctors were all like, oh fuck, we gotta delete her. So they basically shut off all the power and closed all the doors, leaving her to drown in the tank that she was floating in. Her heart stopped, but her psychic powers didn't, which I don't really understand how that works. But I'm not a fucking psychic, so I don't know. We start seeing more visions of Alma, and she starts to put her hands on us. But no matter how much of a simp I personally am for Alma, our main character isn't. We get a vision of the swing again, and soldiers taking Alma to the vault. Come to find out, that open empty field Alma was showing us wasn't actually an open field. It's just a shitty little hole in the ground with a swing and a tree. Like holy shit, this poor girl. No wonder why she's murdering everybody now, Jesus Christ. We finally link up with Stokes and Morales, who is the driver of the tank. And we just go on a turret murder spree. Once that's done, Stokes goes with us into the facility. She gives us a little moment where she says that no one could have done what we did and if we make it out, it's all because of us. We get to the telesthetic amplifier and Stokes straps us in and then fucking Aristide stops Stokes. Now I'm not gonna lie, if I was Stokes and I see Aristide just waving that gun around, I would have pulled out my side piece and shot Aristide when she wasn't looking. But instead, Aristide shoots Stokes. Alma doesn't, l uh, whoa, she's a, wait, who? Jesus Christ, Stokes who? Who's Stokes? Um, yeah, any anyways, Alma teleports us to this new area and Keegan is looking pretty sickly. The final boss fight starts and it's us getting to the control panel while multiple Keegans try to shoot at us. When we get to the control panel, Keegan says some jealous boyfriend shit like, oh, why doesn't she like me? And why does he only want you? I don't know, bro. Probably because I impressed her like this. We put an end to Keegan with some very hot flashes of Alma, and then I think we just kind of kill Alma. I'm not really too sure what happened. There's a lot of nudity and a lot of moaning, and I got super fucking distracted. But we get back to the real world just to have another flashback. And Alma is fucking prego, holy spaghetti shit. She has us feel the baby and then the game ends. I really don't get it. If Alma's actually dead, I don't know how she's actually fucking pregnant. But that's the end of the game. I did also end up playing the Reborn DLC and all you really have to know is that Fettel, you know, the murder ghost from the first game, touches this guy and then like possesses him. He yells, I am reborn. Reborn. And that is officially all of Fear 2. And that is going to be it for me, guys. So as always, I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. I always appreciate the views. I always appreciate the support you guys give me. I've actually been working hard on getting gameplay for more games so I could make more of these videos here. And yeah, I'm going to be more consistent with uploading these. And I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time, man. Have a good one.